So before we get going with our next bit of what you're going to learn, uh, I just want to warn you that it's probably going to drive you a little nuts and maybe make you uh, feel like you really have no idea what's going on. So I kind of want to start off by letting you know that you actually already know all this stuff that we're going to see. We're going to be talking about functions. We're going to be talking about uh, different notations, different names. But a lot of them relate to things that you already learned last year. So you could kind of think of the versions you already know as for all the important functional purposes, all the ways that they actually do stuff mathematically, they're the same. But you kind of need to know the non-training wheels version of some of the stuff in order to be able to move further on in math. Okay, so let's, let's first think of simpler times, happier times. Think of, oh, look, look at this guy here. He's so happy. Look, what's he so happy about? Oh, he's happy. What's this over here? Y equals 2x plus 5. Remember that? That was something you understood, right? Y equals 2x plus 5. That was just where it, it, you'd see that turn into some other stuff. You could see how it could turn into a, a kind of a picture if you want. You could graph it on a, on a Cartesian plane where you have an x-axis and a y-axis and the y equals 2x plus 5. Remember that 5? You used to know what that meant. It meant that, oh, this crosses this axis up around 5 here. That's what the 5 means. And this 2 here, that tells you kind of the way that it's tilted. You see how it's like going upwards here? That's because this is a positive 2. And the 2 means that every time you go up by 1 going this way, you're going to go up by 2 that way, right? If this were a negative 2, the line would be pointing downwards. You might remember all that stuff, right? Certainly this guy does. Wow, he looks really happy about this. Hey, Baby Yoda, what do you think of this picture there? Don't you remember loving this stuff? Don't you remember how simple it was? Well, it's not going to be simple for very long. I'm sorry to tell you it's going to get more complicated very soon. But you remember, just embrace this time when you thought you knew what you were talking about. Okay? Okay, I'll be back for you in a little bit. All right, you might even remember when that same thing, that y equals 2x plus 5, you could turn that into what we call the table of values last year. A table of values. That's where you just took a bunch of x's that you made up, whatever you felt like, right? You said, okay, let me just take a bunch of x's. And then if x is what I have here, like if x is minus 1, then I can figure out what y will go with that minus 1, right? I can just take the minus 1, replace x with minus 1, then 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, minus 2 plus 5 is plus 3. All right, that means I put a plus 3 here. If x is 0, let me go back. If x is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 5 is 5. Then y is 5. If x is 0, y is 5. So that's how you got these tables like this, where you had an x and you knew you could figure out a y that goes with it. And notice, watch here, as the x is going up by 1, each time the x goes up by 1, the y is going up by 2, right? You remember vaguely that was because this number here is 2. That's what happens to the x. That's what happens to the y when the x goes up by 1. The y goes up by 2 here. And if when the x is 0, the y is 5. That's just another way of seeing what this number meant. Remember, you knew all that once upon a time last year, right? This is what we call the table of values. And it lines up with the picture and the graph, all these points here. If you think of these as coordinates, like the point negative 1 and 3 shows up here as negative 1 and 3. That's like a point right there, right? 0 and 5, that's like this point right there. They all connected together. It all made sense, right? Ooh, a lollipop. Look at this reassuring and not terrifying little child here. He really likes this table of values, and you should too. Okay, oh, and we got a baby koala. The baby koala is thinking about independent variables, independent variables. Now, I know this is one of the harder concepts that wrap your head around and took a little bit of learning, but he's just a little guy. He's growing up. He's going to be able to figure out what independent variable and dependent variable mean, right? Right? Yeah, maybe he does remember that. Well, I hope he does because it's going away. Because we're not going to talk about writing things like y equals 2x plus 5 all the time anymore. We're still going to do it now and again. But we're going to write this same thing in a more complicated way. Instead of writing y, that's only two strokes of your pencil, right? Why don't we have a whole bunch more? Why don't we write y like this? This doesn't look like y at all. It looks like fuchs or something. And it looks like you're trying to multiply f times x when that's not really what you're doing. You might say, well, why do we write it like it looks like I'm supposed to be multiplying f times x if that's not what I'm doing? The answer is because. Because, bye-bye, koala, we hate you. Bye-bye, koala. Bye-bye, baby Yoda. It's a new world where instead of writing y, we write crazy things like f of x, and we want you to understand what that means. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. 
has to do with understanding how you can do calculus. Don't you want to be able to do the derivative or the integral of this function? Yes, of course you do. Of course you do. You're saying, no, I don't. I don't think I do. And I'm saying, well, I really don't care. You still got to learn what it means. All right, all right. Hooray. Okay, let's move on. And this thing here, you thought this is a nice line that I drew on a graph. Well, line was too simple a name for it. We're going to call this thing a linear function now. You might say, well, uh, why is it a linear function? You say, well, you didn't know that there's actually a test you can do on this thing to decide whether or not it's a function. You're saying, but I don't even know what a function is. How am I supposed to decide what is and isn't a function? The answer is, you'll find out soon enough, and then you'll be sad you ever found out. But that day will be behind you. And then you say, okay, well, at least I still have that nice table of values, right? It was just if this, then that, if this, then that. And we say we can't just talk about x's and y's anymore. Now, instead of talking about x's, we're going to call them inputs. And instead of talking about y's, we're going to call them outputs. And instead of just saying that x is the dependent variable, we're going to talk about things like domain, which is a fancy way of saying all the things x can possibly be. And instead of just talking about y's being an output, or y being a dependent variable, we're also going to talk about range, which is all the things y can possibly be. And you might say, well, I don't even understand how this could be a problem. Couldn't x be anything? The answer is sometimes yes, but sometimes no. And you can say, but I don't understand what that means. And I can say, I know you don't. That's the joy of it, because I'm an awful human being. All right, so now that you understand that domain is all the things that x can possibly be, and range is all the things y can possibly be, then I think maybe you can embark on this new land of nightmares called functions. But when you travel through this land of nightmares, remember that way back somewhere deep in your knowledge are all these things that you actually understand. And if you can relate them back to the things that you do understand, then maybe you'll just get out of this one okay.